Have you noticed how since you are a Christian and you're born again, when you read the Word of God, righteousness is obvious. Paul said, he says, you know, I don't need to write about this, but the way, you know, sin is obvious. Even if we try and reason around it, we know what's right and wrong. Some things are just, oh, come on. I mean, that, that is, but have you noticed how people in the world, it's not that obvious. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We're having a look at a powerful subject. Heaven moves when Christians pray. Sometimes we wonder, where is God? How come nothing's happened? And yet God has placed it in our hands to be able to speak His Word and see it manifesting. Now, the enemy has been trying to stop God's will from manifesting in our lives. He'll try and get in the way. He'll try and cause destruction. He'll try and even stop angels from moving. I'm going to show that to you from the Word of God. We've seen it, we've studied it out, and we know that when we pray, even angels move on our behalf, and we see God's Word coming to pass. If you've got people that you'd like to see saved, friends, family, colleagues, there's tremendous power in prayer. Heaven moves when Christians pray. You'll enjoy this. I'll see you later. We don't have to worry about a God that'll get around to us. We serve a God that is very interested in your life, in the outcome in your life. Now, I know what it's like. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if God is God, then how come he hasn't moved yet? You know, God seems to be late. When's he going to do something? Now, there's various reasons for that. Various things need to sometimes happen before what you want happens needs to ha take place. There are other processes that will need to come into place before what you're asking for can happen. We understand that. But sometimes it can do with our intercession, our praying. We find out here yeah, that the angel says to Daniel, the first day you prayed, I, I was released. So that angel moved, obviously under the instruction of the father, but he was released on assignment because Daniel prayed. Well, what took him 21 days? The angel said that he came up against the prince of Persia, a demonic spirit in the heavenlies. When we saw that there was King Cyrus of Persia, that's the human that was looking after the earthly governmental affairs. But then we found out there was a demonic spirit, an entity that was controlling those airways. And stop that angel from getting through. But then Michael, the archangel, came and fought on his behalf. And cleared the way for that angel to get through. And then the angel said, now that he has to return to the throne room, that there would be another demonic spirit called the prince of Greece that would come and support the prince of Persia. So there's another war going to happen just for him to get back home. What happened is those demonic spirits withstood against that angel and he had to fight to get back again. Now, what would have happened if David gave up on day 10 or day 15 or even day 20? Thinking, this is not working. I've been praying. I need answers. What would have happened if he stopped on day 20? Well, we don't know because he didn't. But chances are, if we look at how things work, that angel would not have been able to get through. Because he said, because of your prayers, I was able to do that. And so if David had stopped praying, that angel would have no more authority to move or fight. And he would have to return back to heaven. And who knows how that would have affected the whole history of Israel. 
Because what Daniel received was a prophetic word that they could then move on and work with. Maybe we would have had a whole different history for Israel. Because one man prayed and stuck to it and he prayed through. We have the history we have today where Jesus could come into this earth and be our Savior. Isn't that phenomenal? That it took one man's prayer to realign Israel so that Jesus could come into the planet. So can you see how prayers are vitally, vitally important? And so we found out that when we look at our society today and we see in the world the mess that it is in and all the problems that are happening around the world, and even if we focus particularly on our country and we look at the turmoil in terms of the political arena, in terms of health, in terms of the, the social cultures, the social structures and imbalances, when you look at all the, 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 the destruction that's around us in terms of financial lack and poverty and all these different things, you realize that that was never God's plan. The Garden of Eden was God's plan, where man had no lack and no problems. Well, what changed that? Satan entered into the scene and as a result was able to take the earth hostage. Adam handed it over through high treason. And so all the demonic spirits, as we learned last week, that when the devil was booted out of heaven, he came, he fell with one third of the angels. And those are demonic spirits today. Those demonic spirits control this planet. They control people. They control and influence people. You must remember that the earth is the Lord's and then he put man in authority in it and nothing happens on this planet without the authority of man. Sometimes people say, well, God is in control. He is for the believer. If God is supremely in control of everything, then, you know, then the, the rapist is God's fault. So why do we bother prosecuting the rapist if, you know, well, that he couldn't help it. It was all God controlling him. No, there is a devil out there. I said there is a devil out there. See, man was put in authority on this planet. But then man bowed his knee to Satan. And Satan has a way of deceiving because nothing can happen on this planet unless a man speaks it and says it. But if he can influence that person and shut down their thought processes and get them to say things that they would never say if they knew the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God operates and the power of their words, then that devil would never have any authority through that person. But if he can control them and get them to speak then that person will start to set up structures on the planet that will work in Satan's favor. And so when you see destruction and you see the, the racism and things like that, remember that we're not dealing with flesh and blood. It is a demonic spirit. And that's why it is important to learn what we are learning right now. Now we can show that to you. The Bible says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, a truth is established. So recognizing the devil has been trying to control this world, what we see around us is the result of demonic activity. Now God wants to send angels to carry out his plan. There are just as much as demonic spirits cause destruction there are angels that want to correct things. So the success of God's plan on the earth is dependent on the church. See, Satan influences the world. The church controls how much influence the devil has. I'm going to say it again and again and again because we need to recognize our responsibility. Satan influences the world. The church controls how much influence the devil has. And when Christians wake up to that and recognize when Jesus said in Matthew 18, 18, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth is bound also in heaven. What you loose on earth is also loosed in heaven. 
God has put the responsibility in the hands of the church. And so angels cannot succeed in their mission without being supported by our prayers. You found Ephesians chapter 2? Reading from the New Living Translation, verse 2. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. You see, Paul is telling us that we used to live in sin. Come on, how many of us know that we were saved out of sin? Every one of us who were born again. And he says, when we were in sin, in sin, we lived just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. You see, we, we may not have known it. I don't care how sweet the person is and how nice they are and how gentle and loving they may seem. Paul says, when we were without Christ, that's every single human that was not born again, was controlled by the devil. Now, not himself necessarily individually. We studied that last week. If you missed last week, you got to get that CD. There's so much that I opened up that I'm going to assume you know, and we're going to work with that today. So, the devil controls ranks, demonic spirits. We saw there the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece, and then obviously demon spirits operating at lower levels. And so... Those demonic spirits, the Bible calls the princes, the power of the air, control humans. And all of us, before we were saved, were controlled by that. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19, he says, We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Say this, whenever I see destruction, corruption, lies, whatever seems to be sin, it is a result of the influence of the wicked one. Is that what the Bible says? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from the NIV version. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. From the NIV, verse 3. <clears throat> Even if our gospel is veiled. What does veiled mean? If someone has a veil over them, you can't always see who they are. Particularly if it's a dark veil. Veil means covered. Have you noticed how since you are a Christian and you're born again... When you read the word of God, yeah. righteousness is obvious. Amen. Paul said, he says, you know, I don't need to write about this, but the way, you know, sin is obvious. Even if we try and reason around it, we know what's right and wrong. Some things are just, oh, come on. I mean, that, that is, but have you noticed how people in the world, it's not that obvious. You can talk to somebody and it's like you're going, come on, are you kidding me? But you can see in their eyes, they are completely convinced. How do you notice that? And you try and talk to them about the gospel, about Jesus and God and angels and miracles. They look at you like you're the idiot. Come on, anyone had that experience? Why is that? Because it's veiled. It's like, you know... There's something behind that curtain, and I may know there's a beautiful painting behind that. I say, look at that. There's a beautiful painting there. And they look, and they can't see it because there's a curtain in front of it. So they can't see what you see. It's not like they don't want to. They cannot see it. You see, that's often where the church goes wrong. We're busy condemning and we're trying to slam the Bible down their throats and, and this is wrong and you're going to burn or burn and you're a bunch of sinners. And, and they're going, what are you talking about? You, you're more judgmental than we are. You're uglier than us right now. Are you getting this? Why? Because they cannot 
see it no matter how much you stop. Look, read, look. And they go, I see it, but I don't get it. Because it's veiled. Everybody say veiled. See, this is going to help you a lot with soul winning. Next time you get a blank look, don't panic. Don't try and cram an idea down them. You've got to get their hearts before you get their heads. That's true about you, wasn't it? How often did you sit and talk and argue with people until they got your heart? When Jesus gets your heart, the rest comes. Amen. There's things today you believe that you just say, if God says it, okay. You don't even need proof anymore because he's got your heart. Amen. So yeah, the word is telling us the, the gospel is veiled. Now, who's it veiled to? To those who are perishing. Those who are already destined to hell. We were also. So that's why we didn't see it at first. Now, why is that? Verse 4. The God of this age. Who's that? That's the devil. This age, this dispensation, this time... That Adam was given lease on the earth. This age, the devil took that from him. So now he's called the God of this age, this dispensation, this time. Okay? So he's the God of this age. He has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Now you know why when you try and talk to someone about the gospel that they look at you blank because their mind is blinded. How's their mind blinded? By this devil. By demonic spirits. Their mind, it's like a fog. It's blank. It's blinded. So no matter how much you explain, I'm sure you've been amazed at the ridiculous reasons people come up with to excuse why they are happy to go to hell. Isn't that right? Why? Satan has blinded their eyes to the need for salvation. And what about your loved ones? Your family? How many of you got family and friends that you desperately want to see come to heaven with you? But they are fighting you to go to hell. And you go, if you even knew what hell was, I mean, unsaved will make jokes about hell. Like laugh it off. And you wonder, how is that possible? Come on, how many of you got friends, family that you want to see saved and you desperately wanting to see them give their lives to Jesus? This is what we're talking about. Is there any hope for them? If the devil has blinded their minds... Is there hope? The good news is yes. You see, now, I don't know, as we've already said, in the natural, how do you do that? I mean, if you've got somebody's mind, and you found out, I mean, you've tried to tell them about Adam and Eve. you try tried to tell them about Jesus. you try tried to tell them about how God has a heaven and there's going to be a judgment one day. You try to tell them about how bad hell is. You try to tell, you try to tell them all these different things. And they just, they still, no, 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 no. I hear you, but no. Yes, I see. And they'll ask questions, but, and what about this? Come on. So you realize now it's a demon wrapping himself around their mind. So I haven't figured out yet in the natural how to reach and grab that demon and pull him off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they were wearing a material veil, I could rip it off and say, now look. <laughs> so how do you get rid of that veil? How do you clear that mind? Come with me to Romans chapter 8. How many of you felt desperate? How many of you felt like you sometimes feel useless you try to get somebody saved and they just want to fight and go to hell you feel weak like you don't what what more you feel useless come on anyone ever felt that way look at romans chapter 8 verse 26 
Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. The Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Now that word help, it's, it's five letters there in the New King James Version. H-E-L-P-S. But in the Greek, it's like a long word. I'm not even going to try and say it. It's got like seven syllables. Long word, big word. And what it means is, it means coming together with against. Coming together with against. In other words, it doesn't replace. It comes together with you against. Let me give you an idea. Pastor Vestal, would you come here, please? Let's say this was my resistance. And I wanted to push this out the way. Now, assuming it's on, you know, slides and everything is going to move. If I come like this and I try and push it, maybe it's, I want you to think of something extremely heavy that I, it's, there's no ways I could possibly push it. No matter how much time I work out, this thing is like no human. You can take the strongest man on the planet and you wouldn't be able to move this. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. That, an object like that. It's not just a pulpit. It's really heavy weight. Then we have Pastor Bessel, the Holy Spirit, come over here. He comes alongside with me. Together with. Okay? Against. So I still have to do the pushing. Okay? If I'm not there, he's not going to push. If I don't put my hand to it, he won't push. But if I put my hand to it, he'll take me and using my body... With his strength, he will push. And he is strong enough to move that. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. To be a force, to have power, to exert power. In this series, you will discover your part in God's plans. Even though we know what God has said, it's up to you and me to pray to bring it in. You will discover the authority we have when we pray. When you speak what God says, then angels will go into action. And you'll discover the power that's released when we pray. Bring it forth in prayer. This series will shed light on the different ways to pray in the Spirit, the importance of prayer relating to salvation, and will strengthen your faith to deepen your prayer life. Let's be those prayers, let's intercede, and let's see God move powerfully because heaven moves when Christians pray. So get your series today by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Now, we've all heard about prayer and we know that we've, there, there are different ways of praying. We may have prayed at school, our parents may have prayed at home, we, we may have even tried to pray and not quite seen the results that we expected to see from prayer. And yet God does teach us there's specific ways of praying. And if we pray accurately the way He teaches us to pray, every single time you'll see God results. It's a powerful statement, heaven moves when Christians pray. So I really encourage you, get a hold of this series. We don't have time to show everything on these programs, but get this, listen to it again and again and again. And the more you hear it, Faith will grow stronger within you, and you will see just how powerful your prayers really are. Now, the most amazing prayer anybody can pray is the prayer of salvation. Maybe you're watching this program and you've not yet given your life to Jesus. My friend, I want you to know God loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've been through, sometimes that's difficult for us to reconcile because you know, if you knew what I did, I can't see God saving me. That's just the point. He saved everybody if they would just believe it. He so loved the world that He gave His Son that whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. You notice it's not based on your actions. It's based on believing. So pray this prayer with me right now. While, they, while you're watching this program, say this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you. You gave your life for me. You died for my sin. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. 
And so I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. Right now I'm born again. I'm a child of God. From this day on, I live to serve you, to worship you. One day, I'll leave this earth and I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you just prayed that prayer, you are now born again, a child of God. Now, there's something I would like to send you. This is a little card. It's going to explain to you what's just happened. Also, some guidelines now that you are a Christian, what happens from today on. And then this wonderful study is going to help you read through your Bible in a year. And then I want to send you this CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. Now, that's my free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. And so if you've just prayed this prayer, if you can call us on that phone number or write to me on that address, as soon as we get your details, we'll make sure we send that off to you and you should have it in a few days' time. Well, welcome to the family. Other than that, that's all we have time for today. We look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Join us in the Helderberg area at Section 3 Gan Center on Saturday evenings, Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. You can join us in the Cape Town City Center on the corner of Durham Avenue and Victoria Street on Sunday mornings and evenings. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format, so purchase yours online at alanbagministries.org. Choose life.